First item on the agenda is the approval uh, approval of the agenda. Could I have a mover? Steve Dillabaugh, seconder. Second. Mark, Mark Beckwood. Thank you. Are there any disclosure of pecuniary interest or the general nature thereof? We can call the motion. Oh, I'm sorry. We have to call the motion. We have a motion on the table. All in favor? Carried. Thank you. And now we go to number three. Disclosure of pecuniary interest and the general nature thereof. Am I hearing any? None. None. Hear none. Thank you. Now we have a delegation tonight. It's Heather and Chris Abrams. Uh, they were with us on the 27th of November, I believe and uh, gave a presentation. I believe this is an update to that. Am I correct? Uh, I suppose so, yeah. We were just to get the report, or receive a report from the, whether you're going to cover the clinic costs. Okay, so well. We report back from your Okay, staff. that is, a, that, uh, that's an information item and it's on, uh, it's on our uh, action information. Uh, which is next, so I was under the impression we had a delegation from you, so. So you want me to speak to that? Okay. Well, okay, that would be fine. <coughs> Thank you for having us here this evening. Thank you. Um, so the last we were here, you were waiting for a report from your staff uh, regarding the um, coverage of the across for the backup that happened in our home. My understanding that the report uh, is indicating to not recommend covering the costs. Sorry, I can never say. <laughs> okay. Um, take take your time. So, in the notes from what I read from the website today, it says that the township will take necessary action to reestablish flow in the sewer main. We were out of our home for more than three weeks. I'm wondering if you consider that a reasonable time frame for necessary action. Uh, just say, uh, some of you may not realize or understand the actual what has actually happened. Um, we've had two sewer backups at our property starting back in 2016 in February. Um, we were told that following day that. They didn't want to open up the street due to the fact that impending snowstorm. We said, no problem. We understand that. They, they paid for the snake and drain and Cameron, uh, which is, uh, which Morrisburg plumbing come through and automatically uh, build directly to the township. Um, they said they would come back and fix it. Over two and a half years later, it happened a second time without the township coming back to fix. So then we took it upon ourselves to uh, talk to uh, the mayor, and Mr. Deschamps was there at that time, and during the conversation, uh, the mayor had stated that, the you know the township, <coughs> everything is delayed, delayed, delayed. Well, two and a half years to fix that sewer backup is quite a delay. We wouldn't be standing here today looking to receive the cleanup cost of 600 and some dollars if the township had to come back and done their job to begin with and fix it the first time. It took them two and a half years and a second backup and now they don't want to cover this. This is <coughs> all that's pending that's gone on. <coughs> What we're looking for now is a reimbursement. We did the right thing and we paid the now CMR bill to financial detriment to ourselves. I have an invoice here that says it was paid in full. In writing, I have an email from Ms. McKinstra on October 10th that says, we suggest you move back into your home after a week or so of normal usage, the township will pay Morrisburg Plumbing to re-camera the line to ensure that everything is functioning properly. If there are any problems identified, 
the township will take necessary action and also have the camera work done again until we can get a good handle on what's happening. So if you told me in writing that you will repeatedly cover the cost of Morseburg plumbing if necessary, I don't understand how you won't cover the cost of Mount Chamama, or sorry, Mount Construction, pardon me. It's the same, it would have been the same, right? The bill for Morseburg plumbing was paid though, was it not? Yes, it was. Okay. That was, that was four hundred and twenty-three dollars. So if it had to have been done multiple times, it would have been far more than the cost that I'm asking. For. Again, we did not spur any um, recovery of financial expenses that we cleaned ourselves. Replacement of insurance, or sorry, insulation and poly and stuff that is used in our crawl space. We threw out clothes because I did not want to put sewage waste in my washing machine. We lost food because we had moved out for three weeks. We incurred costs, <coughs> my parents incurred extra costs having us there. Those are not things that I asked for. I only asked for the NAPS bill to be paid. I have copies here if you want me to provide them now or I can send them to you by email. Was, what did the, did the backup flood your entire basement? It's or a dirt crawl space, yes it did. Okay, and so there was sewage waste the crawl space. everywhere. Okay. So it Not to mention the fumes and the sewer gases, fumes that we had to evacuate from. We have no idea how long our family was exposed to sewer gas. Our furnace is in the crawl space, so all of the fumes and everything went through our entire house with our duct. Our duct work needs to be cleaned. Is there no backup, backflow protection? It's not required. No, 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 that's not the issue. At this time, no, it's not. We were looking to replace our line at the same time, but as soon as this happened, we had scheduled for backs to come and dig. As soon as this happened, they would not return our phone calls. No, no, So no, that'll no. be done in the springtime at our cost. No, I'm going back to 16, 2016. Is there no backup? Flow protection no. put on in, in 2016 when the first backup and the first no blockage because occurred. it made sense for as it does for you to make sure that everything's done at the same time. If we knew our front yard was going to be dug up at the same time as the street repair, why would we do that at a second time? No, no, no. But the backup arrestor goes inside the house. So that's what the I'm back saying. Backflow protector. Right. So we would have to dig up our front lawn, no, no. repair the entire line, because the way it goes, it goes under our footings. We would so have taken we, the old cast lawn. It's cast, it's old cast, so we would have taken and put all up to date new poly, or new ABS and uh, a backflow yes. provider. So because we knew that you were going to be repairing the street and digging up partial our partial lawn to begin with, we in turn thought that it would be a good idea to make sure that all of the digging was done at the same time, which we intended to do this time. But again, once this happened, all of a sudden Beck started re refused to return our phone calls. We spoke to the foreman of Cornwall Gravel. He said, yeah, do it at the same time. That's your best idea. That was two weeks before the backup happened. I'm looking at it from a, excuse me, I'm looking at it from a technical point of view here, trying to, do, to understand this. Um, the backup protector, backflow protector, I think they're called, are they not inside the house? Are they not installed inside the house, if I get through the chair? Yes, you are. You are correct. Through, through the director of operation. Are they not installed inside the house? No, that, <coughs> that is correct. Okay, so I'm going back now to 2016. When the first problem occurred. So in 2016, <coughs> the first problem occurred, there was no backflow protection on the line. My understanding is that it, it looked like the blockage was. Um, it's in the exact same spot. Okay, but um, no matter where the blockage is, it's still your house. That's so, right. So, the blockage gets cleared in 2016, mm -hmm. um, but there's no backflow protector put on to, to protect your house if it should happen again. That's right. And in 2016, we didn't know that we were going to be doing this street in 2018. Um, 
No, we didn't. I can tell you that for sure, because we never made that decision until 2018. Yeah. Well, to my understanding, what was told to us at the time was that that Walker Street was to repair, be repaired in the spring of 2016, but you chose to do the uh, east-west instead. No, 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 I don't know where that idea came from, but I mean, and I know Walker Street has been a, and I don't mean to be argumentative here, but just to, so that you understand the timelines, uh, the Walker Street project was, um, how shall I say, it was a project that was on our list for quite some period of time. And, but we did not make the decision to do the project until spring of 18, I think it was. Am I correct about spring of 18 when the decision was finally made? It would have been in the winter of, of, 18. of 17 to spring of 18 now, through that budget cycle. Okay, I, I looked at my notes the other day trying to find my, uh, trying to find my, uh, the decision that it was made at a public works decision and uh, at the time that it was made there was a financing package put together and um, I, I know that that final decision wasn't until late 18 or mid 18. So anyway that doesn't get us any place. The point is that after the first problem there was still no backup protection put on, backflow protection put on. And so now it happens again in 2018. But I think you, we can agree that as far as timelines go, digging up our front yard and repairing our line, as well as putting in a back row preventer at the same time would make sense for both parties. Well, um, the back flow, per, per, the back flow is not code. Is your is your responsibility? The Absolutely. line, if the line's on our property, that's our responsibility, and I understand that. But uh, I look at it from the point of view: if it's my house, I wouldn't really care where the problem was. I would want the backflow protector to protect me. <clears throat> and, and I understand that. So anyway, now we have the situation where it's 2018, and. Uh, the, um, this looks like, from the briefing note that we have, you called around October the 1st. Uh, we left our home on September 27th. Okay, but... Mr. Grant was called on September 28th. Okay, but now our briefing note says that you called us on October the 1st. I think there were multiple phone calls made. Northbrook Plumbing then invoiced us on October 1st. That was the day they did the sneaking. When did it actually happen? What date? We left our home on September 27th. That's at, when, eight, at 8 o'clock at night. So that's when it happened, September 27th, not October 1. Yes. That's when we noticed that that's exact, that was it, what had happened, was the sewer to waste. We didn't move back into our home until after October 10th. And you called four days later to the township no. telling you that we had a blockage? My husband called that evening and then spoke to Mr. Grant on the 28th. Oh, on the 27th, same day. Did it happen? 28th. 28th, next day. Yep. Because you left at night, right? You left at 8 o'clock yes. or whatever. And yeah. he actually missed three days of work. So well. it was September 28th in the morning. I can get his time sheets from work to prove to you that he was not at work on September 28th. Okay, so when was the, um, the, there was a period of time there when you weren't in the house, and uh, according to the briefing note that we have, owner called on October the 1st, owner called indicating another blockage and arrangement made with Morrisburg Plumbing to attend later that day. Notified around 2.30 p.m. that blockage was cleared, camera work performed, and a slump in the pipe observed. The location of the slump was marked over land. The owner advised that their insurance company would not cover the cleanup cost despite the owner paying additional sewer backup protection coverage after the first event in 2016. Staff indicated we would advise our insurance company. Well, I mean, 
our insurance will not cover it because they claim that we're not at fault with the proof that we have from more spring plumbing saying that the blockage is on township property. Okay, so that's why your insurance won't cover. October 3rd, staff advised the owner, staff advised the owner proceed with clean up and keep a record of their actions and invoices. So what date did the actual cleanup get done? On the Wednesday, which I believe was October 3rd. Sorry, I don't have a calendar in front of me. You were out of your house for Thanksgiving, weren't you? Yes, we were. Why? More than. Thanksgiving wasn't until much later in the month. Um, well, like I said, we have the email from the uh, CAO advising us to go back into our home on October 10th because it was Thanksgiving weekend and we had to go into our crawl space and clean it out ourselves. We, we weren't comfortable going home. We were we had very limited usage until we knew that the street was repaired, mm -hmm. which took place on October November 1st is what you indicated in here. On November 1st, the new lateral sewer was installed. So By we us. actually went, yes, we actually went to my so parents now, often to use facilities rather than using our own because we didn't trust our own. So have you got backup for backflow protector on there now? Uh, no, because by the time that we got this done, we wouldn't be able to dig. No, no, the back floor protector goes inside the house. I understand. But I've also told you that financially, this has caused a burden on us. No, but without back floor protection, you're just... Exposing. And you're insuring me that these new sewer lines... I'm as not well insuring as you anything. Plumbing, plumbing no, 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 insure no, no. me that we would no. be fine until the springtime and so we could get this in. Well, just hang on one second. We can't provide those kind of insurances because we don't control the weather and we don't control a whole, a whole number of factors that can affect you. I understand. And if it does happen again and it is something that results from our doing, I would certainly do whatever I need to do to put that back full preventer in before I am able. But this is proving that the blockage was on township property. And I'm sorry for getting frustrated, but this is ridiculous. You didn't put the, you're, you're saying you want to dig everything up on your side of the property and change it to the ABS pipe. Is that what you're saying? That's correct. We were going to, we were going to do this. We had already talked to. You got cast iron now? Yes. Okay. Which, and the house was built in the 40s. Yeah, yeah. yeah which yeah, had showed that there was nothing wrong with the pipe uh, both times on our end. So okay. we were going to change it all over and put in the, what's, what's called the backflow prevention uh, all at once. Well, uh, we, they would. Mr. Beck wouldn't even call us back or talk to us after they found out that we did have a sewer backup. So by the time that they had already got, by the time that they had already got down in front of our place, dug it all up, we could, we had no time to get anybody in to dig our section up to replace all the pipe and put the backflow prevention in. So your backflow, your goal is to do that this spring, is that right? That is correct. I'm going to have my brother come down and. and we are going to dig and replace all the ABS, uh, the cast iron with ABS, and put. I've already got one ordered at um, Home Hardware in Prescott is a backflow preventer. Like I mentioned on November 27th, the invoices were not paid by us because Mr. Mayor, you sent me an email on October 30th that said, I am sure that payment of your invoices will be included in the November check run and approved by council at the November council meeting. Well, that was on the basis of the information that I had at that period of time. The information hasn't changed, sir. Well, we don't, what we don't know is what's causing this. We seem to understand that, we seem to understand that it's on our side of the line, if I can put it that way. And that seems to be, I mean, I don't see anything in the briefing note that we have that indicates that it's not on our side of the line. Uh, the note from Morseburg Plumbing on October 1st says that it's, it, the clean out is 75 feet into city sewer, 
One son blocked the camera and sewer located bad spots outside with spray paint and USB was provided. So photos were provided to you of exactly where the blockage was. And it, and I mean, I don't, I, ha I don't have any contradiction in front of me that says that it, it was not on our side of the line. That's what led me to believe that we would be, um, that we would be uh, dealing with this. When, when Morrisburg Plumbing came in and <coughs> camera the line, what did they, did they find a blockage? Yes. And did they know what that blockage was? No. What they, what they actually did is they can't camera first, so they, they, they uh, put in 75 feet and found the, the, found the actual felt, felt <coughs> blockage and had to auger through it to clean it out. And then once they retracted that, then they put the camera down in, and uh, when they were going in, they, they found where the blockage had actually occurred and the dip in the pipe, which was slowing the solids down. Once there was enough solids in there, that's when it started to back up, was the, the, the dip in the pipe. We didn't do a camera inspection in February of, of, uh, of uh, Yes, 16, did we? Yes, they did. They did. They did auger and camera, and they said we did, or or Morrisburg. Morrisburg Plumbing did, and they said that it was an extra. Set. It was the same. Seventy-five feet out was the sway in the pipe. Same spot. S exact same spot. So again, what happened in February? Um, Morrisburg Plumbing did the day off work myself. They were found it where it was. Unfortunately, there was an impending snowstorm the next day, so they didn't want to dig up the street. Mr. Grant called me and asked if they could come through the house. I did, and then he then told me that all invoices would be directed to them because it was on township property. We didn't receive copies because it was billed to you. In 216. Yes. That's correct. They, they do have video proof and uh, invoice proof. In fact, if I remember correctly, the gentleman that came in October of 2018, and I remember being here before. So, <coughs> so we identified the problem in 2016 uh, through camera, and it and they identified Morrisburg Plumbing identified it as a sway or a dip in the height. That's right. The same distance, that w which was never fixed. And the reason that you were given that it was never fixed was that it was going to be. When the, street was when the street was done. And so then it happened again in 2018. Yes. And the reason it wasn't dug up and fixed then was because it was going to get fixed in two, three weeks later. two more weeks or three more weeks. Which we were fortunate enough that it did happen in time because Cornwall Gravel, from what I understand, had asked for an extension. They weren't even going to get to us until this happened. So, so when it was cameraed again this time, October. It was this, the same distance again and the same sway that, that caused the backup. Thank you. And that, that differ sway isn't on your property. That's it's correct. on township property. It's on it's township, yes. Correct. Right. Basically yeah. almost in the so, middle of the street. So the only thing that, that has been pointed out that you could have done to prevent this is to, is to have, had, have actually put a backflow on the bedroom. That's right. Uh, so it would have happened again? Short of it, it, short of it actually being dug up and it actually yes. Yes. be repaired. Okay. Chairman, through you, through our operation manager, I'd like to hear his report on it. With, re with respect to the events? To your opinion, opinion of uh, the blockage, what, what caused it, where it actually well, cer certainly, certainly, no doubt. In uh, we can go back to February of, uh, of, of twenty sixteen. There, there was a blockage, and uh, as for the br briefing note, typically what it is is through the building lateral gets cleaned out, and you move forward. Um, I understand that the that the owners say there was camera work done and submitted. I have no. Uh, I, I've checked with our staff and we have no camera work for 2016. So typ typ typically on the first event, you wouldn't camera it. Um, 
I believe that if there was any camera work done, it was cameraed before they removed the blockage. There is a note on, on our um, occurrence sheet regarding that. So uh, typically what it is, it's cleared out and, and, and you move forward because it may be just something that was, was deposited in the lateral that uh, it maybe shouldn't have been or something of that nature, you move forward. If there's a reoccurrence, you, typ you typically camera to, to try to determine if, the, if, you know, if there's a bigger problem than simply something it, you know, stuck in the line, i.e. a break, um, anything of, of that nature. So the first time that staff um, viewed the video that showed a dip in the pipe was October of this year. So, um, over, overall, the, the, the lateral sewer is in pretty good condition. But it does have a slump. There's there there's no there's no doubt that it has a slump. There's probably um, so it's not that good a condition. Then. Well, if you if, if through the chair, if you if you're looking at a, a potentially a sewer that's been in place since the 40s or 50s, yeah. uh, it's in pretty good shape. Yes, yes, it is. They would not release the video to me from the original in 2016 due to the fact that I am the house owner, but they automatically build the township direct. So if you're looking for that, they have it on file and they can get it for you. You're talking Morris Park Plan. Yes, that's correct. Not release it. Okay. So they didn't give it to you, Dave. I'm not. In, in no, they wouldn't give it to me. No, no, I'm yes. talking about it didn't give it to the township in February through, 2016. Through, is that through, right? through the chair, that is correct. We did not, we did not receive that. Okay. But it was done. Yes. Sorry, I was just going to say, Mr. Grant is correct. They did camera the line prior to honoring the blockage in 2016 because I was there with them. Certainly. Dave, would it be. Um, reasonable if, if the distances uh, are the same from the house, roughly 75 feet, is it is it reasonable to say that the, the dip would be the cause both times? I, w I would certainly say that, that, that a slump is a contributing factor, but given that two and a half years of, of usage went by, I, I, I would say it's it, it's minor in, in the nature of things. The slump is a minor cause. In give, given the time the, the time that's went by, two and a half years of, of, of usage on on that line, given that 2017 was an extremely wet year. Um, so uh, we, we certainly know that our, our entire systems were um, at their limits in, in, in the spring of 2017. So if, if it was significant enough, it, 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 it would have caused some type of issue at that point is, is the theory. So we, go ahead, Madeline. We all kind of are. Um, the, so the dip, the slump, whatever it's called, it, it is gone now. It has it was repaired with the Walker Street repair. That that is correct. The there's a, there's a, there's, there's a new gone. main and in, in, in lateral so to re, to the property line. It's reconnected to to their to their cast that's there, and, and there's no longer uh, an issue with a slump or a dip. Correct. That is correct. So, so, and there's no slump now. That is correct, to the best to, to, the, be, to, to the best to the best of my knowledge. So, so you're indicating that, um, in view of the, the long timeline between the two events, you you regard the slump, the so-called slump, as a as a sort of a, a possible minor cause. What would you think the major cause would be? I would uh, I, I would not want to. To try to guess, and there's too many variables 
No, but it's October, sense. so it can't be it can't be uh, frost. I would not anticipate that it, that it would have been anything related to heaving or anything of that nature, unless uh, unless uh, uh, during during the construction with the added um, heavy traffic on there. I mean, the traffic's not on the lawn. The, the, the brake is on the edge of the road. And they were using our street to go back. So well, that's on the was, edge of the road. It, it, it would, uh, how, if, how, if how long you, were you out of your house? Three and a half weeks. Three and a half weeks, not nine days? I can try to count nine days here. So we left on September 27th. 27th of September you left. And we moved back in on after October 11th. Okay, because I was talking to you Thanksgiving weekend at that Kenan's meeting, is that right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. I'm sorry, I, I forgot no. that you were there as yeah. well. Yeah. <coughs> Which I was told. So October 11th, you moved back in? The middle of the week. On a Thursday, October 11th? Okay. Now, to make it perfectly clear, um, the amount that you're looking for, I believe, is $562.50. Plus HST. Yeah. Plus the, HST. The, the paid receipt that I have is six thirty-five sixty-two. Six thirty-five sixty-two. Yeah. Yeah. They did not charge us any additional interest because of what's going on. Okay. I just wanted to clarify that. Thank you. Have they got paid rate right as of today? They were paid on December twelfth. Okay. By you. By me. My husband. Okay, we have a uh, we have a recommendation. Are there any more any any more discussion? Anyone? Um, uh, um, I have copies of this. Okay. Um, if there's nothing further, thank you for coming. Do you like a copy of this? Um, not at the moment. Thank you. <coughs> okay, now we'll move on to um, sec, um, 6A, the lateral sewer, 3049 Walker Street. What no, here? no, no. What happened here? I thought you said we were done for it. No, no, sorry, I just thought you were finished with the presentation. So we're, we're, we're now on the lateral sewer line on uh, uh, information item 6A. We have a recommendation. Uh, and the recommendation is that committee does not recommend reimbursement, reimbursing the homeowner for any cost associated with the cleanup. Could I have a mover, please? Uh, before we go there. No. Sorry, go ahead. No. Um, oh. I'd, I'd like a little bit more time to, to deal with this. Um, I'm wondering if we can leave this to later in the agenda, uh, skip over some of the, uh, the earlier um, items, or skip over uh, 6A right now. Um, and uh, deal with the other items on the agenda in sequence and then uh, possibly uh, come back to 6A later in the evening. I just need a little bit of time to get my head around this. If that would be acceptable to the chair and the table. We have, uh, we have, we have a request uh, which, you've, uh, which you've just heard. Is there any, uh, any objection to Deferring, deferring this till later in the evening. Uh, well, of course, of. Don't well, we up to the committee to what they choose to do with their agenda. Is. I'm hearing no, uh, no reason why we should proceed with this at the moment. You know what I'm hearing? We will proceed with it tonight. We will. 
on is that is that correct, uh, Mr. Mayor? That you want to deal with it tonight? I, I'd like to think that we can deal with it tonight. We can deal with it. Tonight. It is going to be dealt with tonight, though. Yes. Okay. Yes. Everyone in concurrence? Then we'll move it to. So it's becoming H now. It'll become uh, H. Thank you. Okay, moving along, we'll item 6B, Dishaw Street, Water Main Break, 2018, information item. And I believe, uh, Mr. Grant, you're uh, going to deal with that? Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just wanted to advise committee that we had a uh, water main break on December 30th around 11.20 uh, p.m. Uh, our staff uh, responded. Um, I isolated the, the main and uh, had, had everything uh, repaired uh, approximately uh, uh, six hours uh, later. So uh, the, uh, the procedure, there's a procedure for um, um, emergency or unplanned repairs through the uh, Ministry of Environment and that procedure was followed by, by staff and um, we're, we're not fully uh, sure of the, uh, the cause of the, uh, the break, but uh, anticipate with all of the weather from uh, plus five to, to minus 30 uh, uh, stretch that we've had, uh, potentially some, some heaving that has caused, caused that uh, crack. So. Um, now, Mr. Mr. Yes, go ahead. So through the chair, yes. uh, can you tell us if the, um, the, the 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 age or the condition of the um, of the main that, that where the break occurred, roughly what age we're looking at? I I believe that we're looking at uh, early seventies. Early seventies and the and the type. It, it is it it is uh, cast iron I believe. Cast iron. And it's an eight inch. It's an eight inch pipe. It's an eight inch main. Oh, you use an eight. You do use a stainless steel clamp then. We use, the we, we, correct. we use the stainless steel repair clamp. And I believe this was at uh, approximately the corner of Highway 2 and Dishon Street? That is correct. Uh, any, you, any other questions? Yes. yes. Um, it says here uh, we're okay because uh, it remained above uh, 65 PS, PSI for the Environmental Service and Public Works. So what, what's that mean? Is there, is there like a rule or a law of rule of thumb or 65 PSI is, is going to be safe? Yes. Uh, through, through, through the chair. Uh, typically, uh, system uh, pressure should re remain above uh, 20 PSI. Uh, and that is, that is the um, a ministry standard or provincial regulation standard. Um, so the, the, uh, the, the system, it wasn't uh, severe enough to cause any type of um, a system-wide droppage. And, and what's, what's, what's the uh, pressure that the uh, ministry goes by? Uh, it should be above 20 uh, PSI. Above 20 PSI? Yes. And it was 65 at the time it of the was, break? It was 65. So we're well above that, we're right? Well above that, correct. Uh, excuse me, another thing too, the concentration um, that you use the chlorine in the uh, 1.74 milligram. What is that? That's just a uh, to flush out the system to kill all bacteria. Is that what you're saying? Uh, through through the chair, that is the, that is the residual chlorine that was in the main after after flushing. So typically, the system should have a, a chlorine residual uh, above uh, 0 0.05, and typically you like to be below four milligrams, somewhere in that area. Thank you. <coughs> Any other questions? Okay, thank you. That's an information item. We'll just move on. Uh, Mr. Chair, before we move on, Certainly. was there another break today on uh, on Dundas Street? Uh, through the chair, not not to, not not to my knowledge. There was. Uh, we did have uh, a, um, a sewer lateral uh, repair that took place on on Dundas. Well, it was a Did lateral. I, yeah. Just out of curiosity, was the repair on our side of the line? 
Uh, combination of both. Combination of both. Yes. And again, was it a was it a breakage? Uh, in this particular case, it was uh, no crowed pipe. I'm not sure how many are familiar with the the tar paper uh, pipe that was to be be all end all. Uh, it's a be all end all for probably about 50 years, and then it seems to uh, collapse. So. And was it was that was that pipe used right from the main to the house? That type. Uh, it was an interesting combination. There were about uh, four different uh, pipe materials. Four different types going from from our side to to the house. Uh, through it, yes. Oh my heart. Yes. Yeah. So, so, so I, I believe we're now. I believe we're down now to two. So. <laughs> Okay, any other, any other questions? Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll move on. And uh, it's now uh, number 6C, County Road 2 East of Cardinal Speed Limit. This was, uh, this was brought forward at a notice of motion uh, a few weeks ago, and we now have it here. Mr. Grant, are you going to deal with this? Uh, I, cer I certainly can, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, ba basically, I uh, found a uh, sort of a, a, um, a project that City of Hamilton undertook. Uh, it's, a, it, it's, it's a little dated, back in 2001, but I believe that the, uh, the key findings uh, out, out of that uh, consultation process hold true today. Um, and uh, I, I think there's a, there's a balance that needs to be struck between uh, um, safety and ensuring that uh, motorist mobility and, and quality of life of residents are, are not impacted greatly by the, uh, uh, by the speed requirements. And so um, basically what, uh, what the findings that we found from our two week uh, um, count in, in November of this year uh, was that actually speed was, re, uh, was the average and actually the 85th percentile speed uh, was, was down lower than the, uh, um, the speed spy that uh, the OPP used back in 2016. So basically 85% of the vehicles traveling on that, uh, on that stretch were, were traveling 73 kilometers or less. So. Yes. Uh, so, question. David, thir thirteen of twenty-four on the on the first page are, are below twenty kilometers an hour. I, mean, I drive that stretch of road at, every single day, uh, and I'm not sure that I've ever encountered uh, a vehicle that, that's driving below twenty kilometers an hour. So, is it reasonable to think that those were people that live right there, pulling into their driveway or pulling out of their driveway? And do those numbers skew the outcome of this uh, overall number in a lower fashion because there's 13 of 24 uh, at such a low number? Thank, thank you. Through the chair, uh, no, I, I, I don't believe so. You're looking at anywhere between uh, 10 to um, 50 kilometers, you, 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 you would not have uh, a thousand, so it would be like about 10 to 15 percent of those numbers that low. So the bulk, the bulk of the numbers uh, really start to take effect between 50 and, uh, and uh, 80 are the, are the main bulk. So I, I don't see that influencing the, uh, the 85th percentile so or the so average. So they don't speed. throw out the bottom 10 percent and the upper 10 percent work, work with the middle mm -hmm. 80 or something like that? No. To, to the chair. Uh, this this um, report that we've got, the statistics summary report that we've got in front of us, um, the period was, is that uh, December the 11th? Or no, it being November the 12th to November the 18th. Is that correct? That is, that is correct, and I believe it's November 19th November to 19th the 25th, 25th yeah. is, is, is the second week. Okay, so my question is, um, I'm not... It's westbound on County Road 2. Where was the placement of, uh, and maybe in the briefing note I've just forgotten it, where was the placement of the radar at that, uh, for those two uh, weeks? Uh, exact location, uh, I am not 100% sure. Uh, 
uh, I believe it was uh, probably 100 150 feet past the uh, the curve. Okay, what's the So it's about. Uh, no, it was on the straightaway heading yeah. into Cardinal. So it's about. I think it's about 150 feet, probably yeah, from from that bumping station or or, or the curve. Yeah, right. Heading west. In. Yeah. So before that, I just thought right. it would make sense for him for the bumping. Station. In in the 60 zone. Definitely in the 60. In the 60 zone. zone. Correct. And the average is 62. That's what it's saying. Our yes, the, is the, the, 62 the, clicks. The average speed is 62 clicks. Yeah. In both reports, too, isn't it? Uh, the both both reports are very consistent with respect yeah. to average speed and 85th percentile. Very consistent. I do, Mr. Chairman, I'd just like to uh, add one uh, go ahead piece of information here. So the initial um, work, statistical work, was sometime prior to that. Thing. Uh, way back in around about, if I recall correctly, around about election time, back in early October, and I believe that uh, you you sent me a, a number of reports that I forwarded to a, to a constituent. Uh, I just wanted to report to the to the to the table, Mr. Chairman, that uh, as a result of that initial report and some conversations that I had with people, there was some feeling that a lot of the offenders, on those initial reports, that some of the, some of the offenders were some of the heavy trucks coming into Cardinal. And uh, I sent a little request to uh, the plant manager in Cardinal asking if uh, the, um, if the um, transport drivers could be uh, warned of the fact that there are speed limits uh, in and out of the village, both eastbound and westbound, and that if the, uh, the uh, drivers aren't prepared to adhere to those limits, we'll ask for a, for a heavier police presence. And uh, I'm assured that uh, a warning was issued to all of the uh, drivers coming in and out of the plant. So I'm thinking that that warning may have had an effect on this report that we see in front of us because I see do see some reduction here compared to, I believe, compared to the earlier um, reports that we had from October and September. Or, or am I misled here? Or am I misreading what I'm hearing, what I'm seeing? Through, no, through the chair. Uh, cer certainly there's a reduction from the, from, from the 2016 um, uh, data that the OPP um, tabulated. Um, the, the, the county data, um, which is, I believe, what you're referring to from the, from the September time frame. I think it was. It, no. it was the county, and that, uh, that setup was done in the 80 just prior to you entering the 60 zone. Yeah. And uh, so nat nat naturally, the uh, um, the percentile in the average speed is is up higher because you're in, you're in an 80 zone. Bad placement. I believe that the placement was put in there to uh, determine whether there there was warrant in extending the uh, the zone out further. I wanted to see what whoops, sorry uh, what the uh, what the traffic speed was uh, approaching that 60 zone. So I, I think it was two different um, reasons for why that why it was undertaken. Councillor <coughs> um, was the the first application of the of the uh, the digital sign was was on the the outside of the eighty or or it was just inside the eighty? Because my recollection is that it was somewhere near the. Seely's house at the end of 
flat street, some, somewhere as, as you started up the hill. Um, we have the 80 sign right in our front yard. And I don't remember it being on the Iroquois side of our front yard. I remember it being uh, on the other side. I may be wrong. Uh, so, so through the chair, if you, if you were heading uh, west into Cardinal at that time, uh, that, that sign was set up uh, and um, there, there's, a, there's a photo of it where you see the 60 ahead sign in the background. So it was in the 80 zone just prior to entering into that uh, 60 zone. So the 60 zone, the, the 60 zone begins right, right at my house, right? Uh, so, so it was on the buyer side. You, you still, you still have an eight, you still have an 80 sign there. It was an 80, but I trimmed the grass around it. So, yeah. Yeah. so as you as, as you as you travel further west, you have a 60 ahead sign, and then you move into lines the 60 80, zone. Lines an 80 begins. Correct, heading east. So it doesn't. It do, it 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 doesn't it, do, it, 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 it doesn't right flip it. One, it it does not flip exactly side. in the same spot. Okay. I assumed it did. Okay. Um, Mr. Grant, I, I I just have a question for uh, for clarification. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at the uh, statistics summary reports, and we'll take the uh, the first page. Uh, 11, 12, 18 to 11, 18, 18. And at the bottom of the page, on the fourth column over, percentage of violations, percent percent violations. Am I reading this correctly, that on the average, 54% of the traffic that went by was in violation of the speed limit? Of the posted speed limit, that would be correct. Okay. As, as you can tell, with the average speed being 62, that would be above 60, and therefore... Right, and then two more columns over, maximum speed. We have a maximum speed average of 95 kilometers an hour? That is correct. And then if we go to the next page, which is the later, uh, the later time frame, we mm -hmm. have 58% on average in violation mm -hmm. and 96 percent of the maximum speed or ni uh, 96 kilometers per hour mm -hmm. that that to me that seems rather 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 high and i think that the police could have a field day gosh 50 percent of the traffic that goes by could be ticketable Look at some of the speeds that are going on. I, I, yes, I, I, I have done that. Uh, yeah. Uh, through the through the, yeah, through, through, through the chair, uh, there, there is no, there is no doubt that, um, a, a, as you can see on the second uh, statistic summary report, if you look by counts by speed bin, bin on the right hand side, you you have one person that that or one vehicle that traveled between 115 and 120 kilometers an hour. And, and you look at 105 to 110, two, nine, seven. What, what that works out to is, is about less than 1% that are, point on point, very unreasonable drivers. So there, there's no doubt that, uh, uh, and uh, th those may be the only ones that the OPP uh, would catch, but to, to indicate that uh, percentage of violations of 58 percent that they could they they could ticket 58 um, um, percent of the people. If you if you're going 62 in a 60 zone, I, I find it I find it hard to think that the OPP are going to pull you over, issue a ticket, and because they're they're not going to win in in that in that particular sense, right? There there there's a degree of of, <coughs> of variance in in that end of it. Um, Naturally, if you're going 85 and a 60, uh, high, high, highly likely that uh, that would be. But o overall, what, it, what, I, what, I would, what, what I would say is there about 90 to 95 percent of the vehicles traveling along there uh, are um, using that section of road reasonably. There, there's There, there, there's a small percentage that are not, and 
I, I'm, I, I, would, I would think that by potentially reducing uh, or, or putting in a, a 70 kilometer zone in between the 80 and existing 60, the, the only thing that would occur is that you would increase your violators. Yeah, that's right. Because they're, they're accustomed to driving in an 80 zone and that's what they feel the, it is an 80 zone by dropping it to 70 they're going to continue to drive at the... Until they realized it was a 7. I, I don't, I don't, I, there is no indication from the reports from, from, from Hamilton and my discussions in OPP that by putting up a 70 sign that they're all of a sudden going to say, oh, I need to drive 70. They're going to drive to the road conditions and we all end up, um, un unfortunately, I think we've all had the time when we're driving along a stretch of road and look down and say, oops, I can't believe I'm at that speed. Doesn't, doesn't happen, does it? Well, it has happened to me on occasion. Do the devices, <coughs> I mean, in addition to this very valuable information that we get from the devices themselves, uh, when the devices are in place, they flash your speed as a, as a kind of a warning. Um, do we have any kind of um, uh, knowledge that that indicates that those devices themselves are effective in uh, reminding people uh, what their speeds are and getting them to slow down. Where they may or they work. Uh, Maybe. Uh, through, uh, through, through, through the chair, I would, I, I would say for vehicles that don't use that stretch of road regularly, uh, it, it, it would have an impact the first few times. You see that flashing one and you say, oops, if, but um, if you're if if you're using that on a daily basis, um, you, you become numb to that sign. Were there mayor? No, you don't become numb. I travel 300 kilometers roughly a day, mm -hmm. and I see one of them, and when they start flashing, man, I hit the brakes. I don't care if I've been up there five times; it does get your attention, and you will not cheat. Believe me, I know you will not cheat. I think they're great, especially the ones where you got the smiley face and the ugly face. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. It's true. It can make your attention, and, and you do obey when you go in there. I'm sorry. I know it's fun, but it does, it does work for, for the chair. We uh, in the past had them installed. If recollection serves me right, on Bridge Street. At some point. Um, uh, did the exact opposite not happen uh, with those? Were people not actually using them as uh, stunt drive speed limiters? I had heard through the rumor mill that people were trying to see how fast that they could go through town. Uh, through the chair, I, 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 am, I am sure that there is a small portion that, that may have very well have used it that way. Um, and and through, uh, through the chair also to, to, to Councillor Yellowbaugh's point, um, I, 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 I'm certainly not disagreeing. What, 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 I, what I would certainly indicate is that, that a two-week period, um, if that was true, we, have, we, we would typically have the majority uh, of, uh, of people go using that stretch on a regular basis during week one and week two. If they, if, if they, if they were paying attention to that sign uh, more frequently, we should have seen a drop in week two. We, we, we saw no drop. And that's that. That's what that's that. That's what I'm going by. Um, the, the the difference is, uh, I, I would say that your uh, your driving is reasonable, and you you understand that, right? Oh yeah. You see that, and you and, and you panic, and most most people do. Oh, yeah, that's true. It works, it, it, it's 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 fair that probably and they're all over the country now. Probably 85 percent of the people the will. Yeah. Through the chair. Go ahead. I think that uh, been pretty good information you've got gathered for especially from Hamilton and the effects of it and stuff. Uh, if you really look at the stats here over a, a week period, you got about 400. Uh, the police probably would ticket if they're there. You take it over a seven day period, we're probably talking about pro probably about the same 45 or 50 drivers mm -hmm. that are doing that violation. It's probably the same ones every time that are traveling that road that are vi vi violating. And we did put a 70 zone on, on the west side of Cardinal. Uh, 
over the last five years, I've seen very little affect that 70 zone head, head coming into Cardinal because the last couple of zones were on, but signs up after we did, and we found very little. We tried to get counties to lower it to 60 there, and they agreed finally to put it at 70 at that time, I thought, and, and we didn't see very much difference. Went 87 yeah, to 60. We seen on coming very, east. Yeah, yeah. We've seen, seen very little difference when we did our studies afterwards, so oh, I really don't think that changing it accomplishes anything. How long after the studies done? We had them up two or three times. They maybe put them up two a week or two after that they changed it, and then up the next year, right? Yes, I'm, try I'm trying. I'm trying to recall exactly what year that uh, it, it actually changed to a 70. But we did have the speed spy uh, 13. So we, so we did have the, the the OPP did do their speed spy uh, on, in in that section as well. And it, it was um, as it, as it turned out, if I recall correctly, that it was uh, actually higher speed on the, the the west side of Cardinal than on the east side of Cardinal, even with that. 70, uh, 70 kilometer stretch off. I'd have to confirm that uh, um, from, from, from the data. Mr. Chairman, I'm prepared to move the recommendation. Do we have any, any other questions? Mr. Crawford, Mr. Beckford, are we all done? We do, have, we do have a recommendation. The committee does not recommend that council petition. The road authority having jurisdiction for a traditional or transitional speed limit posting of 70 kilometers per hour zone in between the existing 80 and 60 um, zones east of Cardinal. We have a mover. Second. Seconder. I'll call the question. All in favor? Opposed? One. Thank you. Okay, moving on, we will go to uh, item 6D, QMS Commitment and Endorsement. And I believe, Mr. Grant, you have the privilege of speaking to this. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So as one of the recommendations out of the um, uh, Walkerton inquiry was that uh, that water systems should establish a quality management system, and as part of, part of that um, um, requires the the uh, an accredited operating authority. Um, so the uh, part and the other part uh, that is required in this is uh, the development of, of an operational plan that meets the uh, drinking water quality management uh, standard. There are 21 elements uh, in front of you tonight is, is basically element two, the policy statement, and, and element three, the endorsement and commitment. Um, there are some parts of the, the operational plan that uh, are uh, confidential. They contain uh, information that, that should not be disclosed to the public with, res with respect to uh, phone numbers and, and, and other items where um, we, we would have access to people that um, in, in numbers that uh, that shouldn't be for for public uh, disclosure. Um, so we have uh, we we have completed a a full cycle of our accreditation process, and we are we are um, part way through our, uh, our our second full round, which <coughs> this this upcoming year in in June will be our um, survey our second surveillance audit. And then a full scope on, on site um, accreditation will take place in 2020. So naturally, uh, as, a, as, as a new council, uh, we're, we're, we're certainly hoping that you will um, um, commit to the to, to the policy uh, statement, the operational plan, and uh, and uh, endorse it. In, in the coming months, uh, staff will be will, will be updating you on basically the, the 21 elements and uh, reviewing some of the uh, uh, the due diligence that and responsibilities that come with uh, the, uh, the the water system and, and this this program so. discussion mr. mayor just speaking briefly and I'm prepared to again to move the recommendation uh, but just speaking briefly uh, we've had a 
quality management system in place for quite a number of years now, and I can see that the intent here is to get the uh, commitment of the new council uh, behind the policy and the system. Uh, but it's been my um, pleasure, actually, to participate in the um, review in the drinking water quality management system review meetings, uh, which take place in each September or October, I believe it is. And I believe in the last four years, it was the mayor and the deputy mayor that attended the meeting, uh, the briefing session uh, with the staff as they went through the 21 elements that the director is speaking about. And um, suffice it to say that during all of those previous meetings, uh, our system that we have in place, our staff is maintaining it to a very high quality and uh, I'm, as I say, I'm, I'm prepared to move this recommendation. I hope that the council will follow it uh, and uh, that signals to the regulatory bodies that, that the council is in fact uh, supporting the system uh, in, a, in a very tangible manner. Thank you. Any other questions? I have one. Uh, Go ahead. Um, the system was submitted, the one there in the page, we submitted a, a, to the MOE in, in 215 to get approved. Uh, in 209, and it took two, year, two years to get it back to say we're approved. Like, why wouldn't, yes, through, why wouldn't uh, someone move on that and say, hey, what's going on? So, so through, through the chair, uh, ba basically this was the, uh, the, the first round uh, where uh, everyone in the province was, was submitting their, their operational plans. Uh, they were quite, uh, um, quite extensive and, de and detailed with respect to all of the related documents, so there was a long review um, process. So um, it, it's not necessarily surprising that it, that it did take that length of time before. So you're saying the MOE would just backlog because everybody else send it in? That is, that is, that is correct. I, okay. I believe there was a, there was a large It just backlog. wouldn't take two years again to, to get certified. A guy would be concerned. I'd be moving on it no. as quick as possible to, to make sure that MOE knows what we're doing and to get certified. Yes. T typically for that certification there is uh, there's about a, a year or a year and a half where where it's submitted prior to uh, um, the, uh, the 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 date where the where the existing one would expire so it's, it's a year and a half typically for some for some of some of the program okay thank you yes. um, just one quick question: Is this just for drinking water? What this is about, or is it like stagnant water, like pools and stuff like that as well? So through through the chair, this is strictly for uh, for, for potable drinking water okay. systems. Um, just looking back through uh, emails from uh, Gordon and Davison for uh, drinking water uh, seminar. Is that? that sort of tie in exactly with what we're, we're talking about? I think it's Wednesday is the seminar. Yes? 16th of January. Through, through the January, yes. There, there is a, uh, yes, there, 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 there is a, uh, there was an opportunity to, to, to attend a seminar this Wednesday, four hour um, uh, seminar, which is, is uh, I believe it's section uh, 19. I, I, I call it due, the due diligence portion, and it's a four-hour seminar um, explaining uh, the, 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 um, the council role with respect to uh, performing due diligence uh, as part of the quality management system. Yes, so, are those not mandatory what, sessions? Yeah, it's suggested that there, it, 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 Yes, through the chair, it was suggested they, they attend. And uh, in, in one of the notes, we said that we would, we would look at, uh, at hosting one in, in an evening for, for the entire committee at, at, okay. uh, at a later date. Go ahead. So is there anybody signed up for the Wednesday one? The chair. Not, uh, not to my knowledge, and it uh, may be a little bit too tight of a time frame right now to get that submission into the uh, into the Walkerton Clean Water Center for Wednesday. Where, where's it being hosted? Smith Falls. Smith Falls. Oh, okay. Through 
through the chair to our operation. Once you take that, although they give you a certificate, you don't have to take it again. I know they I do. Can they they, they last they, time I was on, they give you a certificate at the end saying you've taken it. So. Yes, there is a there, there is a certificate that that yeah. that they is issued. Have to update it a little, will you? Um, Same thing, pretty well, isn't it? We 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 would highly recommend a, a, a refresher be be taken, but uh, there's probably no mandatory requirement with that certificate that you, that you already have. Any other questions? Okay, we have a uh, we have a recommendation. Um, I'm not going to read it. You've all re you've all read it. Uh, do we have a mover? Yes. Second. No. Marcelo, seconder. Mr. Dillabaugh. Councillor Dillabaugh. Okay. Then call the question. All in favor? Carried. Moving on. Six E. And it is uh, smoking bylaw, the smoking policy, municipal smoking policy. And I believe uh, Rebecca is going to speak to this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so basically um, we've had a smoking bylaw in place in past years. We updated it in 2017 uh, to make smoke-free areas. Um, more expanding of the park areas for safety of children. Um, but with the changes of the federal regulations and the Federal Cannabis Act of 2018 October um, made cannabis legal. So we are basically updating our policy for the smoke free areas to include cannabis. <coughs> Questions? Discussion? Go ahead. So through the chair, and my apologies, uh, I just have a question with regard to the actual bylaw itself, and uh, my apologies, I didn't get a chance to call today to see uh, what the correction might be, but I'm looking at the policy one, two, three, four, five, six. The sixth whereas clause does not appear to be um, a complete um, a complete clause. There seems to be a a break there someplace. Uh, should be regulate. I think the word regular should be regulate. Oh, regulate. Oh, that makes sense. That's after the word and? Yeah. And regulate with respect to the word. That's right. That's in the, uh, section 129. Yeah. Okay. Yes. The, uh, the new bylaw. Um, mentions an awful lot of, of, of green space. Now, I didn't see the original bylaw, which is 2007-49. Uh, I, I didn't see that. Is the word green space in, in that bylaw it as is, well? Yeah. Are there any major changes from the old bylaw to the new bylaw? No, just uh, with, excuse me, through the chair, the only change is to add cannabis. But, but if I may, Mr. Chair, and, and, the, and the Deputy Clerk already spoke to it, but um, and I, I, I know personally for myself, I was very impressed when we had a, a delegation of rather young people uh, come and make a presentation to us about uh, getting smoking away from our parks because our other bylaw, I don't think, included parks. And uh, the delegation, uh, I think the kids were all probably in that 8 to 12 to 13 year old, and they made a very uh, impressive delegation, and very impressed, impressed the council enough to change the bylaw. Any other questions? With your chair, I have one. Um, I'd like to see under the new bylaw, uh, where it means every building, structure, park, sports area, etc., green space, I would like to see if we could add including street fairs, festivals, and parade routes. Mid. 
interesting. What? Street fairs, festivals, and prairie groups. Because I can see it happening, having Labor Day weekend parade, and someone's going to be puffing on that in a crowd of older people or younger, my grandchildren. Yeah. You're talking about banning smoking and like Sorry? you're talking about everything in general, not just not just cigarettes and cigarettes, cigarettes and cannabis. And yep. The problem is we, uh, <laughs> chair, our our uh, our authority only extends to our facilities so street fairs festivals festivals and parade, parade groups. groups are we getting outside our our jurisdictional ownership i don't think we are well we don't own the county road oh but we own dundas street no that's a county, part of that's a county road yeah the east the west portion well whatever through the chair I can see where you're coming from, but I just don't know how we'd ever enforce it. Because all they have to do, all the parade groups, all, all somebody comes along, all they got to do is step back in somebody's door yard, and then you're on private property. Yeah. Well, that's fine. It's a lot better than a crowd. I don't mind it being in there. I just don't see any point to how, how it would ever be enforced. So. Interesting. Interesting. It is. Interesting. Extension. See, municipal um, facility, it, 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 it's quite detailed in what it covers. And it, sure. virtually any municipal land is virtually covered in this. Which we own. The biggest thing I'm, I'm worried about is the parades. It's expensive affair and in Labor Day, period, really. But the word it we must have taken all in. And most of those parades are on the county. Sure. How do you police that? How do you police that? Sorry? How do you police it? Well, that's why we've got bylaw officers and we have $10,000 that we can buy signs with. So. coming up because we're going to be uh, can we put that on to the next meeting uh, which this your suggestion yes um, and do a little late work see how we can please it I, I or would, if it's possible I would I would be prepared to um, to move the right to move the recommendation and ask for a, uh, a staff report as to whether or not we were, we would be able to extend in the manner in which you suggest, but it just seems to me. But anyway, I, I'm more more than prepared to, to see what staff has to say about extending to those three um, that you named. Sure. I'd like to get this passed now. Yeah, we can always amend it. We can amend it, correct? Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> any other any other discussion? We do have a recommendation. The recommendation is that committee <coughs> recommends that council adopt the municipal smoking policy as attached. Should we say as attached and or amended? We'll say no, as attached. As attached. Okay. And then I'm prepared to move it. You have a motion. I'll second it. And if we have a mover and a seconder, Councillor Hunter and Councillor Dish. Dish. <laughs> Sorry, no, I, 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 I said I'm not going to go with that, but, but I did. <laughs> Almost did. Anyway, okay, I'm going to call. Sure you didn't have a dead in your name. <laughs> going, to, going to call the question. All in favor? Okay. Carried. Um, Chair? If I may, just to clarify for staff, is it the committee's will then that we should prepare a report with respect to Councillor Dishaw or Councillor Dillabaugh's suggested edit? I'm sorry, uh, I'm sorry, I missed that. Uh, 
I just would like to get firm direction from the entire committee that council that staff should invest some time in a staff report to respond to Councillor Philbaugh's suggestions. Yes. Should we do that? I'm sorry? Is it worth your time to make the report on these? I think it is. I think it's very important. Okay. All right, I'll I'll call on the request for a report. Is that all you need? I'm not hearing consensus. I'm hearing two folks at the end here suggesting we should be doing that. <laughs> okay, I, I would I would concur myself. <coughs> You're in agreement? Yeah. I believe that that uh, carries. It's carried. <laughs> I'll put 55% of my effort in there. <laughs> <laughs> Can you make sure that that's like that? With it, yes. All right, moving on, we'll go to uh, six, uh, six F. Uh, maintenance request. Shootin, Shootin Branch of JRDR Municipal Road. And I believe Mr. Grant will speak to this. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The recommendation in front of you tonight is that Council uh, recommend that Council approve maintenance uh, work on the uh, Scutton Branch of the uh, James Riley DeWitt Rector Municipal Drain as recommended by the Drainage Superintendent. Uh, that letter is attached. Also attached is a sort of a, um, a procedure that, uh, that the drainage superintendent should uh, uh, follow with respect to, to drainage uh, requests. So just, just to give council a little bit of background, that uh, the, the Drainage Act uh, requires the township to be responsible for repairing and maintaining the municipal drain. So it's usually defined as a drainage works un un under, the, under the Drainage Act. And that's done through its appointment of the drainage superintendent, which we have uh, Mr. Kevin Hawley from the Greer Galloway Group as our drainage superintendent. So, requested before you, and uh, I'll, I'll attempt to answer any questions you may have on uh, on this item. Thank you, Mr. Grant. Any uh, any uh, any discussion? Yes. Go ahead. I'm uh, I'm a drain weary and drain wary, <laughs> especially as it comes to the JRDR drain. So I would um, be prepared to move the recommendation uh, slightly amended if I may. Uh, and I'm relying on the letter that we have in our possession dated January 4th from Greer Galloway. And in that letter that we have in front of us, on the third, second paragraph of the letter, we have the sentence, two sentences actually that are key to me. The Schutten branch was not maintained during the previous clean out of the DeWitt Richter and the James Riley municipal drains. Upon review of the existing <coughs> engineer's report, Greer Galloway recommends that the existing report on file is sufficient to be used to complete the requested maintenance. And to me, that's key because we're not going to do any work on these drains without engineers' reports if we've learned anything in the past four years. So I would be prepared to move the recommendation, provided that the recommendation was written this way. That committee recommends that council approve maintenance work on the shooting branch of the JRDR municipal drain, comma, using the existing engineer's report, comma, as recommended by the drainage superintendent. I want it very clear that we're relying on an engineer's report. <coughs> Chair, 
<coughs> excuse me, I agree with our mayor there. Just one thing I'd like to be quite clear when we're going to do this that uh, once they start, we're not going to come back with uh, I'm saying, oh well, now we're in it, we need this re engineered because this has happened before. After farmers have asked, all they want is it cleaned out to the standards that were there, and all of a sudden we ended up with, as farmers with a million dollar engineer's report that was, in my opinion, very folly report that they did because we've had all kinds of trouble with that report since it was done. And we as farmers ended up paying for it. So I want to make it quite clear that we're issuing this that it's been strictly maintenance, not re-engineering. Is that, uh, mm -hmm. that amendment all right? Any other any other discussion? Just a question. Question. Um, okay. The last engineer report on that was it 2009 or prior to 2009? Does it go back that long? Through, 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 through the chair, it it, it is uh, substantially older than uh, than 2009. It's uh, probably a 70s uh, report. Yeah, but then they re-engineered it there when they did the cleaning the last time in 2008. Nine, they did more engineering work. Because it changed the structure of the. It, it, it's it's it, 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 that's it, where we've had all the problems. We've had up there with the sand washing out and the, and the culverts change direction and stuff on it. <coughs> through, through, through the chair, there, in 2009, there was work done on, on the James Riley DeWitt Richter, but not any upgrading or, or any kind of maintenance done on that Scutton branch which feeds no, into it. No, no, not that, 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 that's correct. So th th this particular branch has its yeah. own, yeah. own yeah. original yeah. engineering yeah. report, yeah. which is... Uh, back when we did the, the north west branch, branches out of that ditch, we didn't clean this branch. And that, it was done in 20, 2012. <coughs> 2011 and 2012 yeah, have been, yeah, would have been the time for that. That ditch yes. wasn't required, but now they've cleared all that land up through there. They want to drain, so. <coughs> so, again, just, just for my own clarification, mm -hmm. just um, requested maintenance would just mean that uh, a clean up, a clean out of, of the area, but nothing that, that really requires a, a change to uh, that existing report or anything. Just basically a clean so, so through, through the chair, correct. So, so w w contained within the engineer's report is is, is basically your your blueprint of, of how the ditch was designed, the, the parameters, and, and and basically this would just be a clean out to bring it back to its original slope uh, exactly. 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 and what the original one was. Correct. And and none of the other changes that have happened since then. This would impact them in, in some way that isn't foreseeable, or if they've taken that into account, I suppose. So through the through the chair, the the, the original the sorry the, the engineer's report completed in 2009 would would have taken the uh, the, the flows from that uh, branch into consideration as as part of that design. I, I believe uh, uh, I wasn't involved in it at the time, but I believe that originally the Scutton branch was potentially going to be looked at, but. Um, it, it, it was not. No, farmers withdrew the request to have it cleaned up. Okay, so, but there was a, but uh, through the chair, there was a request at that time? They had looked at it, but they, they didn't. When well, it was up through there, said it was draining fine for what they had at the time, but now, of course, that land's all been changed hands and cleared, and they want to tile it, so it's filled up with a foot, foot and a half. So. Any other questions? Mr. Mayor? Okay, so upon uh, council approving this maintenance work, um, this goes to tender. I, I, I'm asking a question, it goes to tender. The beneficiaries of the drain are notified that the maintenance work is gonna take place uh, and, the, and the approximate uh, cost to each of the beneficiaries, is that? process that I'm seeing on this flow chart that I've got in front of me? Yeah, so through, through the chair, yeah. So the next steps uh, with, uh, with, with, with approval of council 
will will be to get a, a rough cost estimate of what that uh, what that maintenance work uh, would uh, would cost. It would be um, transferred onto the existing assessment schedule, and, and what we would be doing is sending that out with that notice to the property owners that maintenance has been requested and approved. And this is the the estimated cost, and this would be your your your, your portion upon completion. And does that re, does that trigger a public meeting, or a meeting of the um, of the beneficiaries? It does. It it does, it does not. It is not required in in, in, in a simple maintenance and repair uh, portion of the uh, of the drain. It's we're we're required to maintain it. We maintain it and, and basically bill out the, the the cost as per that assessment okay. schedule. So it doesn't doesn't trigger a meeting. That is correct. In in re, in reality, although the the process does in, indicate uh, notifying the property owners uh, w within the act itself, there there is no mandatory requirement to actually notify the property owners. However, I think it is it, it is a good practice to to get in to to advise in advance okay. in, in, instead of surprise in the end. Okay, any other questions? We have the recommendation amended twice, I believe. I'll call the question. All in favor of the amendment and, and the recommendation. Mr. Chair, I don't believe we had a seconder for the amended motion. I'm sorry, do we have a seconder? Councillor Hunter? Sorry about that, I'll call the question again. All in favor? Opposed? This brings us to item 6G, uh, no parking signage, County Road 21. And I believe, uh, Deborah, you're going to uh, speak for this? Certainly. Um, we, uh, we, have, we have noticed a significant issue with parking problems during auctions at uh, Marshall's Auction House out on County Road 21 ever since the, uh, the auction house was built in 2012. We've tried several different ways to get that under control. We've installed some auction house ahead signage to try to warn people about it. Um, unfortunately, we continue to see people parking on both sides of County Road 21. Of particular concern is parking on the north side of County Road 21 and pedestrians crossing two lanes of traffic to get to the auction house. Um, it, it's a very dangerous area. There's a slight hill and a slight curve from both directions before you hit that area and uh, in addition to our own concerns we've had concerns expressed by the neighbors that there's going to be a tragedy at that location at some point with a child or a young person running out from between parked vehicles and not being seen by oncoming traffic. Um, we have worked with the owner of the auction house to try to come up with some better ways of dealing with it. I, you know, I attend auctions myself and I know that they, when you go to something like that the the impulse is to park immediately behind the last car you see so that you don't have to drive past it and look for parking. So even though there is parking sometimes available within it, <coughs> people still park on the road. So if we can at least get them to not park on the north side of the road, hopefully that will help. Uh, help avoid a problem. When, Thank you. When our item has been brought to my attention is from our fire department. With great concerns that on the north side especially, that's the exit going west to any fires. And it's a very dangerous situation with the fire trucks there, with those cars on that north side of the road. You say not only kids, but some of them get out too far and if there's a car coming the other way, fire trucks would have a hard time exiting at any quality of speed to get to a fire up through there. So they were quite some of them we're quite concerned. Uh, <coughs> were there, through the SIP money, were, was there an expansion to the parking lot? Mm -hmm. And uh, that has yeah. it worked? Or? And additional, uh, the CIP grant was for additional gravel material to put down to expand the parking area and make it more attractive, I guess, for people. Uh, attending the auctions, but uh, unfortunately what we found is that the uh, the auctioneer has now started to put uh, some items for sale on that nicely traveled area, <laughs> which in his last site plan control agreement we've tried to 
um, protect that area for parking, but we haven't had much success or much to expand. So we paid to expand his, his, his display his, area. His display area, yeah. yeah. Where's the chair? Uh, have we talked to him? Oh, yes. A hundred times, eh? Yes, sir. And very little cooperation. And no cooperation? I always thought he was a pretty decent guy. He's a very nice man. <laughs> just doesn't think he has a parking problem. <laughs> well, he's got a parking problem. He's got a bad problem. It's just, no, he doesn't. He doesn't. No, he doesn't. People are he doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, the, the only thing directly to the north of it is, is a is a field and a, and a house to the one end and maybe a house further further down the other end, but it's, it's really just a field, so. Yeah, yeah there's just one residence, just and one, one residential entrance in that. Now, yeah. what are, what's our plan to put signs up mm -hmm. and no parking? That's correct. At so, any time? That's correct. And if they park? What's the what? officer. Bylaw officer, towed away? At the owner's expense? Well, we follow the process, which includes going out, putting notices on windshields, going back out, issuing tickets. But obviously, if he's not helping us now, he's just going to lead us down the path, and so we're going to have our bylaw officer continue putting on paper, continue putting on little notices. Well, but if we had Wilson's towing there, the the hope is that the clients will realize that they're not permitted to park on that side of the road. I don't think so, though. If, we, if you talk to him that many times, I don't think he really cares. It, the, the intent with the no parking zone and potentially getting to the point of towing, although I can't imagine how we'd ever do that, but no, um, would be that it's not the auction house owner who is affected directly, but it is his clientele who's affected who then maybe won't go to his auction. So I think that's in his best interest to mm -hmm. make sure that his clients are. Just, so, so in, in reading that it's a thirty dollar ticket um, made payable to to the township, mm -hmm. is there? So that seems like a good beginning, uh, as long as, as that works. But you know, seeing it's been expressed, is there any way that that, that can be uh, declared like a, a fire access or, or something like that? It can't be a fire lane or or anything that increases the fine. It it basically that's that's most we can do is have John go along and give out fifty thirty dollar fine. Yeah, that's correct. Well, that's good enough. I, I can't think wait we to see try the to results of the first one. Pardon? Can't wait to see the results of the first one. <laughs> no, I know, but I mean, we should try to work with the guy. It's his, he is going to lose customers or people well, aren't going to know. But we've been down that road. For no, I know, I know, I know. I realize that. Really 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 you know, maybe this thirty dollars will wake him up to say, "Hey, guys." I'm sorry, you can't park on that side of the road. Mr. Mayor, you had something? Well, you've got a mic there. Well, what I'm uh, wondering about is page one of the briefing note. Um, County Road 21 is under the jurisdiction of the United Counties. However, they do not enforce parking restrictions, which is true, we don't. Counties doesn't. If a lower tier municipality wishes to designate a no parking area on a county road, which is what we're talking about, council must pass a resolution to that effect, that's us. Council's resolution is then forwarded to the counties with a request that county's council consider a bylaw to establish the no parking area. What worries me is the length of time that it'll get counties, that it'll take counties to act on our request. Um, so a couple of questions for staff. When we forward the council resolution to the county and ask for the county bylaw, can we provide them please with a draft bylaw? Because they, they just don't have such bylaws. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Actually, if I may respond to that, you're absolutely correct. Uh, in past years, what we've been able to do is pass the, uh, designate the no parking area, put the signs up with their permission, and that's all that was ever required. However, the new director of operations at the counties is of a different stripe and prefers to have a bylaw in place to allow that no parking zone to, put in, to be put in place as opposed to just a council resolution. And uh, so it's a group, um, Mukherjee, who has requested this council resolution. It's a new process to me as well. 
Um, certainly, if it will help, we will provide a draft bylaw. But we have been in touch with county's uh, director of operations several times over this matter, so we won't be surprised to see it. Surprise is one thing, action is another. <laughs> so, going back to the, the thought of, of, of ticketing on, on this, then, is so if our bylaw officer is going out and issuing a ticket, is he issuing it for uh, our township or would he be issuing it for counties? No, it, it would be for our township. <laughs> yeah. We're getting the cash. Okay. <laughs> no, well, that's all I was worried about. <laughs> yeah. And my, my question would be. Um, how is he going to go out? Is he going to go out on his own to monitor this, or is it going to be a complaint driven situation? Uh, uh, Mr. Brockett does both. He, he does go out on his own and he does also uh, act on complaints, so it just depends what happens first. Thank you. That's good. Well, I know what I'd like to see happen get the signs up, and the first Saturday, the first day that there's an auction, I'd like to have him standing right there ticketing every single car on the north side of the road. Got to get the message across quickly. <laughs> I'm not going to be at that auction. <laughs> <laughs> Just <laughs> <laughs> I go there quite regularly. I guess we'll be looking for another spot. Okay, we've. Uh, Our sign sucks. Do we have any more discussion before Sorry, I call I the resist. question? <laughs> 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 Do I have a mover for the uh, recommendation? Well, well Councilor Dillard. And yeah, let the word move it. And, and, and a second here? Um, Mr. Crawford uh, seconds the motion. <laughs> and uh, you've, read the, uh, you've read the recommendation. I'm going to call the question. All in favor? Aye. It's carried. Yeah, I think so, too. Yeah. Um, just before, uh, we're, we're, we're now down to uh, our Item A, which is now item H on the, the lateral drain. Um, I, I know there's uh, there's some uh, 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 fidgety uh, people around the council table. Would it be possible to take a five minute break up before we deal with this? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Are you okay? Put us back. We'll carry on with the meeting. We are now on uh, the uh, 6H, the uh, sewer lateral, and we've had considerable discussion about this, and uh, there is a recommendation that uh, the committee does not recommend reimbursement, reimbursing the homeowner for any costs associated with the property cleanup. Um, any further discussion just while we're, before we call the question? Can I make a comment? You can. Um, just personal observation. I'm thinking about this. The first incident happened in 2016. When the township realized it was a problem on our side, and they paid the bill and they cleared the sewer. Am I correct in saying that? That's what happened. And, then, we were, and we were supposed to come and fix it. Yes. If this went to small claims court, two years is too long a time for somebody to do something, to fix something. And to be very honest with you, I think we'd lose. And the reason I tell you that is I looked after sewers for, you know, for the municipality and I repaired 166 of them in five and a half years. And I know a little bit, but that kind of thing would happen. Any further discussion? So what are you saying? What I'm saying is we should pay the bill. Sure. Questions for the chair? Go ahead, Councilor. Before we move uh, a new motion or anything else we have to deal with the one that's that's in front of us first we don't so we could put up uh, uh, this is just a recommendation if I may uh, through the chair it's a staff recommendation uh, committee is quite welcome to put any motion on the table that they would choose to I make a motion 
that we pay these people five hundred and seventy four dollars and some cents plus HST. Five eighty two fifty plus HST plus tax. Do we have a seconder for that motion? We do. Uh, can, Mr. can we have a discussion about the motion before we go over there? Just a moment. Yes, it's uh, Mr. Crawford is the seconder. Discussion? Um, well, I'm in agreement with that. The, the discussion, or it seems that the, the, the worry is that the, the lack of a, of a backflow prevention device, uh, I think Mr. and Mrs. Abrams were quite willing to put one on in the spring once they can dig up their old line. Uh, I don't think that it's unreasonable, uh, or maybe it is, um, but you know, 100% uh, behind the, the fact that we pay for this, I think it's our responsibility. Uh, I would like to see the backflow prevention device, seems like a, uh, a reasonable thing to ask, and once that's been uh, installed, then, then Do you want I support it either way, but I'd like to, to see defer that. payment until the backflow. I'd like to. <coughs> excuse I think, me. I, I'd I like think to see with that the emotion we've seen here tonight, uh, I think that's. I support it either way. So, okay, 100%. Okay. I support, through the chair, I support what uh, Tori said, but I don't think we should defer payment of what's outstanding. I think that should be paid, and then it's paid when the rest right. of the work is done, then that be paid at that time. <coughs> Sorry, thanks. I just, just need clarification from the speaker. Just repeat. Well, I'm just on, trying to understand what you're saying. So right now there's a, there's an outstanding bill of five hundred and sixty-two dollars. I don't think that should be deferred until the rest of the work no. is done. That should be paid now, and when the rest of the work is done, then the no remainder be paid at that time. There's, there's, no no there's nothing left. There is I thought you were saying that. Uh, no, I only no. offered it. I only offered that forward as as a. If there were uh, people against, that maybe it would bring us all, all together. Oh, I'm okay. For either way. Mr. Chair? Councilor? I, I agree with paying it out, and I don't really think we need, need to defer it. I think these people have said they're already ordered a, mm -hmm. uh, a backflow. Well, I think uh, we need to question in it that uh, we get them until July 1st. 2019 to give us notification that they've got a copy of the receipt that the work's been done. Would that be fair? Fair enough. Okay. Okay, um, Mr. Mayor. Okay, so um, I, I'm prepared to go along with the motion to, to make the payment, but what's concerning me is the period of time between now when we pay it and the time the backflow back flow preventer is installed. And um, I guess my position is that, fair enough, we, re we, we, we recognize the, the bill, we pay it, but if something happens in March, our hands are clean, completely. And I, I think you understand that. Fair enough. I just, so yes, I think we all agree that our hands are clean. If it happens tomorrow, our hands are clean on that. We are paying the five eighty two dollars in but October. Supposedly, what caused the problem has been corrected. We are new lines in. So, okay. um, well, Madam CIO, I'm rather confused. <laughs> how, should, how should this? Uh, how, no, I'm you've looking got a motion. For no, you've got a motion on the table. Yes. You've got a motion on the table that we um, pay the six thirty-five okay. sixty-two. That's that was my question. Okay, the motion is on the table. Do we have a? And you we got have a seconder. mover and a seconder. I second it. We do. I'll call the question. All in favor? Aye. That leads us to number seven, council inquiries. Notice of motion. Are there any? Do I hear any? You guys can leave if you like. 
No. absolutely nothing to do with public works either. Um, <laughs> however, uh, it's a chance to ask it. I, I was doing my, my daily Facebook reading uh, today and, and noticed that we implemented a, a clean yards uh, uh, letter uh, to uh, Nikki Adams for removal of a, a couple of vehicles from the property. Um, uh, how do how, Again, it, it may not be the appropriate time, but uh, it, it was something I saw today and, and I didn't really want to wait and while we're, while we're here. Um, it's probably here at CBC, but how, how do we pick one person to uh, use a clean yards bylaw on, on Blair Road uh, when there's so many places uh, inside, inside the actual uh, villages that, that could be uh, chosen. So my inquiry would be, why does John target one house on Blair Road? So if I may, through the chair, John Buffett does not target just one house on Blair Road, but he certainly responds to repeated complaints. So it's a, it, it would be more of a, of a, of that specific one would be more of a complaint driven, not a, not a township driven? If I may, Councillor, it's really, um, we have no gallery or press here, but it's really inappropriate to speak about specific bylaw enforcement cases in an open public meeting. Okay. I would prefer, and I'd be happy to have that conversation with you. Okay. Any others? Uh, I, I don't know whether it's the right place to bring it up, but I, uh, I'm going to bring it up. Uh, not as a notice of motion, but I'm going to ask the staff if they would, uh, and, I, and I'm 
hoping I'm going to get consensus here. <laughs> if they would uh, <coughs> re-examine the concept of an adverse weather event. And what I'm referring to was the <coughs> adverse weather event that we declared a few weeks ago uh, when there was an anticipation that we would have some ice rain event. <coughs> and the whole legislation which gives us the authority to declare an adverse weather event uh, was designed, uh, as I understand it, to provide us with some relief from our minimum maintenance standards so that when we declare an adverse weather event, we've got a window in which our streets and sidewalks are deemed to be under a state of repair which should relieve the burden uh, that, that rests on us to maintain our uh, streets and sidewalks to a certain minimum standard. Now, that, the declaration, that declaration has not been tested in court, so we don't know whether it will work or it won't work. But my worry is that if we declare it too often, it won't work. And in the particular case that we used it in the last time, it turned out that we really didn't even need to use it because the event never occurred. Now, I know the CAO is going to say, but we thought it would. No, I'm not, actually. But if I may, Mr. Mayor, yeah. we do have a checklist. Yeah. And it requires that we hit yes on more than one item. So not only did we have bad weather uh, approaching, but we also were short staffed. <coughs> because we have one operator off right now. And so it was a combination of factors that led to the, the use of that declaration. And it wasn't done lightly. I can tell you that the road superintendent sweated bullets before he made that declaration. It, it, it really does take a number of factors together before the declaration is made. It's not just based on the weather forecast. Okay, but I'm going to come back with a counterpart to the argument. I don't want to be argumentative, but uh, but just a, a different look on things. Uh, I, I don't think we're in the same position as, as, for example, the school board, which has to make a decision whether or not to run buses. We're not in that kind of a position because, theoretically, we could declare that adverse weather event 12 hours after the event has actually struck. In other words, our, the event happens, the snowfall comes or the ice rain comes, we do our very level best, the guys finish their shift, and we know we're not going to be able to get a shift back out on the roads. Declare it at that point and give ourselves another 15 hours or a 15 hour window. And all I'm saying is, we don't necessarily have to declare in advance, we gain the same effect. Uh, by declaring when we know we can't meet the requirements of getting the guys out on the streets. That's all I'm trying to make. Is, Can we look at it from that point of view? And I see, Mr. Chairman, that both the CAO and the, and the Director of Operations would like to engage. They're both leaning forward. <laughs> Mr. Grant, do you have a comment or? Do you Please. want to go first? <laughs> So, so, so the particular event in, in, in question, uh, we, we did receive ice rain. It was, be, it was below zero at that time. Um, all of our gravel roads were a bottle. Were what? Were a bottle of ice or glass, whatever. All, all gravel roads were yeah, yeah. at that time. Uh, the anticipated forecast moving forward was not to reach above zero in, in, in any immediate time frame. Our forces were deployed, we had applied, and we knew that there was no way that we would have though the majority of those gravel roads back to a safe state in a reasonable time frame. So for the protection of the citizens, it was, it was issued, and there is no intent for us to, to look at it, issuing it as a, as a delay in us performing our duties. What we wanna do is, if, if, if the right events occur and we're not going to be able to meet our time frame, then we want to at least advise the citizens that we may not be at that minimum maintenance standard, so 
you choose on your own if you want to go out and go down those roads and, and, and do your activities. I, I think it was a wise decision. Yes, in hindsight, there's no doubt the temperature raised up quick and the paved roads were, uh, I, I'm quite sure everybody was like, I don't know what the heck they were thinking. I, 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 I get that on, on, on the surface roads, but the, but the gravel roads were days before that was they were what I would consider in, in, in good shape. So, so, Mr. Chair, if I may, this is new information for me, and, and I apologize for making an issue if none exists. Yeah. But, we, but, point, but point taken. We, we, don't, we do not want to issue that um, frequently, because then it gets to a point where it, nobody pays attention. Yeah, no, I understand. Fair enough. That was the only time we've had it, eh? Yeah. The first yes. one? Because I thought I missed one. Because you're right, uh, Mr. Grant. It's every back road in our township was like a bottom, and it, a gravel road was like a bottom. So, that was a good call. Chair, now that this was brought up, we uh, have two graders, and uh, I understand the, the last council had declared one grader a surplus. I think that was a bad decision because both those graders were out working for two days scarifying getting those roads back into shape and for all the money that second grader that we're going to get selling that grader to keep it and it, and it works fine it runs fine the motor's good in it and everything but a little bit of maintenance it's going to take to keep that grader sitting down there in the yard and be able to go out and scarify these roads i think they're silly even considering getting rid of it so <laughs> it's one step forward and two steps back. <laughs> I know you're looking at, uh, we don't need two graders to grade with, and we don't need two graders to grade with, and, and, and double surface treatment road you're cutting down, but it comes to the time you still need those graders, to, that grader to back up to scarify, because if you remember, Mr. Mayor, five years ago when we got that ice rain, we, we even scarified the pavement roads get it broke off because it got ice and it turned turned snap and cold the salt didn't work and we even scarified the, the pavements to get the ice broke off if they're halfway safe and safe to travel on so <coughs> you're right maybe we forgot all its scarification now do we have anything else <laughs> okay that leads right. us into i'm sorry Oh, are we still on inquiries? Or? Yeah, we are. We I just, uh, I'd like to know what's going on with the 730 the receivership. Anything? Uh, I, have Any no news? I have no further information. I was in there, uh, to the chair, I was in on um, Friday <coughs> and spoke to the chap that's going to be running the fuel concession. Um, Major Dillon and his partner uh, were putting had just gone to Brockton to pick up the last parts or pieces or whatever it was that they needed to get their internal mechanisms working. And then uh, they, would to be, they were to notify the TSSA, uh, I believe that's the uh, Standards Association. The Standards Association will then schedule a visit and once they certify that that the um, pumping and distribution system meets their standard, they'll be open and ready for business, which he, the chap that I spoke to, felt that it would happen this week, but this is about the 14th time that I've heard <laughs> it's going to happen this week. TSSA does what they want to do, too. Yeah. And when they want to do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't you worry. Don't take the time. So we have heard nothing on uh, receivership? Nothing. Yes. Well, the receivership was settled. The tax portion is, but not the oh, the ta oh, the money. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, we haven't heard a thing. Uh, I wouldn't go as far as to say we, no, we haven't heard a thing. We've, we got the money for the taxes to, before Christmas, and uh, we still are waiting for uh, the outcome of the insurance company's offer and counter offer and counter counter offer. <laughs> are there discussions? I'll follow up with Karen tomorrow. Sorry, I missed the point of the question. My fault. 
Can we uh, move on? Was that part of the mayor's report? <laughs> yes. Can we move to number eight, the mayor's report? The mayor has nothing to report. <laughs> <laughs> what about the warden? Is he going to make this part? <laughs> we didn't have warden down here. And it appears there's no one to ask any questions unless there's other questions involved. No closed session tonight. Could oh, I, I think we should stay for another hour. Could I have could I have a could I have a mover for adjournment, please? Moved by Councillor Deschamps, seconded by Mr. Packwood. We are now adjourned. At